Barakata Yahwa, Barakata Yahwa Shai, Baha Shom, Rakahak Wadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahwa, Baha Shom, Yahwa Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, the great millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. Shabbat Shalom. This is the brother Raya coming at you with another lesson. And I'm going to start it off in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. And you know, first and foremost, we're speaking to you women of the tribes of Israel, you know, you so called Negro, especially you so called black women, you know, Latino and Native American women. Hey, we are coming into the times. To wear that vintage, all these benefits you received from Esau, Edom, so-called white man, you know, Section 8, food, uh, you know, food stamps, SNAP, you know, getting these lucrative government jobs or getting, you know, preferential treatment from these different college programs or job programs, the ability to, you know, just shit all over, you know, a man for just asking you out or putting a man on child support and not letting him see his kids those days are quickly coming to an end and not just you israelite women but all you women especially in america are about to suffer very hard times because what do we see you know inflation with these prices going up we're on the verge of an economic collapse world war three and what you know millions of migrants from different countries coming across the border and you know it's showing up in the news more and more that women out here are getting assaulted in some cases killed by these migrants out here and that's only going to continue as society continues to deteriorate all around us and i opened up the video you know with these two verses to preface a little bit of this video from uh, Appalachia's homestead with Patera titled Another Mom Almost Taken. And I'm assuming with that title, you know, Patera has talked about this incident before. But with these few minutes I'm about to play, you know, there's a woman up in New Hampshire that was almost taken by a couple of, you know, so-called Middle Eastern men. <laughs> Again, you're hearing more and more in the news about, you know, these migrants out here snatching up women and doing whatever they want to with them. And that's why you while you still have somewhat of a police presence out here, what uh, food on the store shelves and, uh, you know, electricity, you're, you got running water, <laughs> you're able to do Netflix and chill, all that bullshit. But as things get tighter out here and that vintage continues to fail, what do you think is going to happen to more and more you women? especially you Israelite women out here. Hey, so to you, you know, you so-called Negro, Latino and Native American women that have come across the truth and you know, it's it's resonated in your spirit and you better be getting right with Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, you know, becoming a modest, you know, feminine woman out here, not following after this uh, Babylonian, sexy, red, feminist, Western lifestyle, because very shortly, it's about to lead to you having a horrific death, which, you know, let's get Micah chapter seven, verse 10 real quick. Then she that is mine enemy. And hey, for the majority of you Israelite women out there, you are the enemy to the Israelite man. Because what? A lot of you are in bed with Esau, Edom and his government system, which continually oppresses, you know, the so-called black, Latino and Native American man shall see it and shame shall cover her which said unto me where is Yahweh thy power and it's going to be especially bad for you Israelite women out there that used to be with the man of the Lord and you gave him holy hell and you've, you've been around the truth so the Most High is going to drop that hammer 
dead on your head. And as it says in uh, 2nd Esdras chapter 9, you're going to know it as to death by pain. You're going to get a horrific death out here. Also, what does it say that, you know, those that knew were beaten with many stripes, but mine eyes shall behold her. And hey, to you brothers out there that have had, you know, Israelite women that have screwed you over. Hey, the Most High is going to allow you to see the get back. The Most High is going to, you know, during Jacob's trouble or, you know, even before then, you know, you may see him on the news or hear from a relative or something. You're going to hear about that woman's horrific judgment. Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the dirt of the streets. And a lot of you women out here about to be, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> stampeded over <laughs> like the dirt in the streets. You thought it was all, you know, good to uh, live in pleasures and live this uh, hot girl summer lifestyle out here. But it's quickly having consequences. The STD, you know, rates are rising single you know single motherhood and, and just women being single and lonely and broken arising out here and then on top of that the physical pain the judgments of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai right around the corner which uh let me see yeah I'll finish you know a few verses in here before we get to that clip I'll reread verse 10 many days and years shall ye be troubled ye careless women and these women are definitely careless out here, especially you Israelite women. You know, on a quick side note, just just pay attention to to women in, in your daily life out here. Say they're walking across a, a crosswalk on the street. You know, they're walking in a store or they're even driving. What I've noticed is a majority of these women out here do not have any situational awareness at all. <laughs> Just because a crosswalk says you can walk across, I've seen them not look to the left or the right to see if a car is coming. And then if a car does come, they look all surprised. But, you know, you weren't paying attention. And then, you know, earlier today on the job, I was, you know, driving around and it was they were definitely, you know, you know, underage you know underage girls just dressed provocatively like they were going to the nightclub at like 10 o'clock in the morning like what what are, what are, what, are, what are, where's the mom or the dad who's probably a cuck anyway you know to say about this just at all levels you, you women are walking around dizzy out here but you know the most high is about to bring that great recompense for that great pride and that great carelessness for the vintage shall fail, 911, government benefits, you know, all these uh, beta male orbiters, one to pay the, the light bill, one to pay for dinner, you know, one to pay for lunch, <laughs> shall fail. The gathering shall not come. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. And again, you know, to you Israelite women out here, you should be in a state of mourning right now. And you Israelite men as well, because we're coming into the times of Jacob's trouble, where Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going to bring great judgment for the rebellion of our people and just the wickedness of this world. And you've got the prophets out here, especially of GMS or Great Millstone, day in and day out, you know, prophesying this word on the highways and byways, as well as putting up video epistles like this online. But are people still, you know, forbear to hear the word and scoff at it and throw it behind their backs, thinking everything's a goddamn joke? They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briers, yeah, upon all houses of joy in the joyous city. And those thorns and briers are what? Representative of these hard, terrible times of Jacob's trouble which are quickly coming upon us but now let's finally get to this clip and this is a fair use copyright disclaimer I do not own any of the footage in this clip nor do I stand to gain from it monetarily it is simply for educational purposes and as you can see you know Patera is a, a Edomite a so called white looking woman and I assume the woman she's talking about in this clip is another you know 
so-called white or Edomite woman. So if this is happening to Edomite women, you know, that uh, have the most preferential treatment in the society, how much more is it going to happen to you nigger, you spick, and you tanto women? But let's get into it. Also, it's going to, I'm going to be going back to talking about how you need to be pre preparing in terms of your physical fitness and your self-defense. You have to do what works best for you folks, okay? And be healthy about it, be smart about it. But you've got to take it very serious. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna paraphrase the story. I got a message day before yesterday, two days ago, um, from someone. She's a follower of the channel. I'm not gonna go into too many specifics because I wanna protect her identity. And she lives up north. I, will, I think I can say this much. Um, her name is Lisa. And she lives in New Hampshire. New Hampshire's a smaller state, but I think we can just leave it at that. She wrote... And you know, when you think of those uh, northeastern states, you think of, uh, you know, safe communities, Steven Spielberg movies, and, and clam chowder. But this is happening all the way up, up there. And, you know, just recently in Houston, you had that 12-year-old girl that was, you know, dragged under that, that overpass and, you know, got dealt with you know, physically and then put to death. You had that woman in Georgia, that college student that got dealt with. I read another woman up in New York got graped. Like the, you, with each passing day, you're hearing more and more about these stories out here. And then on another note, you know, over the last year or so, a lot of you so-called black women down here in New Orleans have just been getting put to death left and right. Yahabu Bahasham Yahabu Shah is causing that vintage to fail and getting ready to make a lot of you that mire in the streets. Me because she wanted to tell me, well, she she was so super sweet. She has a homestead and she was talking about, um, you know, talking about Cochise and, and it was super sweet. But then she said, I have something to tell you. She took her boys to the beach up there. I mean, I, I'm assuming they're getting some pretty warm weather now, obviously. So they go to the beach, right? And they went to, I think she said her sons are 10 and 12. And they went to the beach and like they were in a crowded area, like a boardwalk area. I've never been to New Hampshire, so I don't know. So, I'm, But that's basically the way it's described. And when they were coming, after the day was done or whatever, and they were coming back and they were walking through a busy area, she noticed that she was being surrounded if you will and kind of separated from her boys she was being isolated by four and i'm not i'm going to say exactly what she said four middle eastern men and one of them grabbed her by the arm grabbed her by the wrist and, she and hey from what i've heard you know those uh so-called arab or ishmaelite men you know you know muslim <coughs> muslim men you know, a lot of them are over in Europe, you know, grabbing them women up and handling business, you know, from, you know, from what I heard when they see a woman, you know, dressed provocatively, they just automatically assume, you know, that that woman's a prostitute, which, you know, a lot of you, <laughs> a lot of you Western women are transactional prostitutes. But, hey, you know, this woman, as it's, as uh, Patera just said, she was on the beach with her four boys with her. And these four uh, so-called Middle Eastern men, you know, were about to make their move on her. He said she went into m mode. She knew how to scream. She knew how to. She knew how to get out of that. Um, she said it. It went really fast. Um, she said. She said it was very obvious that instantly when they figured out she wasn't going to be played with. They, it's like she said, it's like they all scattered and backed away into the crowd. What I find most amazing is that she goes into explaining that she's had a lot of training and she's aware of these things and she's aware of her surroundings and she was able to basically break it. She, was, she had to break their hold. She had to break their chain. Uh, because it's very obvious what they were about to do. And she said, it's so funny, and she closed what she said, you know, close out the, the, the message, it's a pretty long message. And she said, by the way, I think, she asked me, she said, do you know blah, blah, 
I won't say his name here, although many of you probably that are local or know me or whatever, you, it's not like I'm trying to hide his name, but I'm trying to hide her in a sense. But she said, do you know so-and-so? She's like, I think you're friends with him. She said, that's my cousin. Well, so-and-so was my head Krav Maga teacher in his, in his strike. And this, uh, this lady that got, you know, almost assaulted by those, those four men, she knew Krav Maga. And, you know, this is just me speculating on the situation. She, you know, she screamed. You know, there were probably a bunch of other men around. You know, it's up in New Hampshire, so it's probably a bunch of Edomite men. So that's why those, uh, you know, four men backed off. But, again, what's going to happen when that vintage fails? When uh, it's chaos out here, food shortages, you can't call 911, and it's every man for himself out here. Screaming's not going to work, and I don't care if you're a woman that knows Krav Maga or any martial arts, you know, uh, the, the average woman compared to the average man, the man's going to overpower him. Just look, <laughs> you know, just look at when you see the, these women that do a UFC and go against a transformer. They, they just get completely wrecked. That's just one man. Imagine multiple men coming at you. You know, Krav Maga <laughs> in any martial arts, you know, isn't going to work. It says in the scriptures that men are going to be as women during these days. That's how bad it's going to get. <laughs> so how much more for you women? I just showed this message to my husband tonight because because I was like, I got to make a video about this and mention this to you guys. And I showed it to James and he just smiled from ear to ear, of course, because we love my instructor that we had. We had and it was also for our whole family. His nickname is Spider-Man. I'm not joking with you when I tell you that. So this, this, this beautiful gal, I hope she sees this video. Thank you for that message. That really, um, I'm glad you're safe. Uh, and, I th and thank you for reaching out to us about Cochise. But more importantly, I'm so glad that you and your boys are safe. And here's the thing. She probably had to train and be yelled at and, and, and understand that she has to yell back and she has to fight. She has to do all of these things in order to get out of that one second. Guys, it only takes a couple of seconds. Ladies, you better hear me out here. You better... I remember a couple of years ago, I heard an instance where a woman who was a, she might, she knew some type of martial arts to where, I don't know if she was a black belt, but she was up there, you know, a guy came up on her while she was going to her car from the grocery store and she froze up. He threw her in the back of the seat of her own car and handled business. Hey, a lot of you women out here aren't, aren't, aren't Black Widow, you know, <laughs> Ronda Rousey. Or, or, or Xena or whoever these you know these cartoon characters out here are a hey, when when society when this artificial society collapses people are naturally going to go back to their uh, roles you know a man being a man and a woman you know being a woman <laughs> that weaker vessel that needs protection from a man but a lot of you women out here have burnt these bridges with multiple men so not only are a random men going to be coming after you but men that you've dealt with in the past are going to be coming after you as well. Be aware of where you are and what's going on with your surroundings, no matter where it is. They were up to something with her. There's only two guesses, uh, and you know what those are in this day and age. Okay? Exactly. And they're not just going after you know, young college girls. They're going after everybody. And the thing is, is we're not talking about, if you talk about and think about Ain't nobody's safe. If you uh, look up, you know, when the Soviet Union or the Russians invaded Germany at the end of World War II, you know, they were ravishing women from 12 years old to 80 years old. Borders of this country, a lot of people think that things are just going to happen, say, in Texas or maybe Florida or California or New Mexico. No, we've seen it. We're, we're watching it happen in Georgia. We're watching things happen in Virginia. Now we're talking about New Hampshire. So did this travel all the way up from the border, perhaps, uh, to New Hampshire? Or is it coming down from the top? You know the answers to all of that. I don't have to tell you anything. But you better be taking your safety seriously. Right now, we may feel like we're in the eye of a storm. 
You might feel like you can breathe just a little bit. No, you can't. No, you really can't. And unfortunately, this is going to be our life going forward for a long time, I think. Okay. And we'll end it on that. She's right on the money. This is going to be the life going forward for a lot of you women out here. More and more instances of you getting approached, <laughs> you know, cold approached by uh, men who ain't going to take no for an answer. But uh, let's get back to these precepts. This is a. Uh, see where I want to go. I'll go to Zechariah 14, verse two, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And, you know, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. And it's talking about these heathen nations and what these migrants coming across the border are, uh, you know, from many different nations. And then on top of that, they're going to be race wars with the citizens in the United States of America. So these different nations already living here are going to be going against you, going against each other and going against you Israelites. And the city shall be taken and the houses rifled, breaking into people's houses. As it says in Second Esther chapter 15, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall, uh, you know, spoil their houses with the force of the sword, which in America, you know, is mainly going to be that gun due to the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And the women ravished and the women, uh, hard art out here and half of the city shall go forth into captivity a lot of you israelites are going to be sent to these different uh detention centers out here which are getting built up and i've done a video on that you know uh probably about a couple of weeks ago and the residue of the people shall be not be cut off from the city but the key point you know mentioning women being ravished because whenever, you know, a society collapses or there's wars, hey, you know what happens to, the, to women out there, women and children. They're easy targets. But I'm going to close it out in Isaiah chapter 13, verses 14 to 15. And it shall be as the chaste roe and as a sheep that no man taketh up. And they shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. And, you know, a lot of these nations that came to America to live that American dream, a lot of them are starting to go back to their country because it's becoming unaffordable. And they see that the situation over here is getting tenuous. But as I said, they shall turn every man to his own people. Hey, this whole kumbaya, we're the world, you know, we all bleed red. We're one race. The human race spirit is going to go out the window during Jacob's trouble. People are going to go back to being tribal and linking up with their own. And if you're caught outside of uh, your race, your nation, let's see what happens. Everyone that is found not amongst their own people shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword, which let me get verse 16. Of course, you want to act, act stupid. This is Isaiah 13, verse 16. And, you know, I've been noticing a lot of you so-called black women <laughs> getting with Esau out here. You know, thinking that, uh, oh, I finally made it. You know, I've had my little mocha tear baby. Well, hey, that's going to be a... To your detriment that's going to be to your judgment verse 16 their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes those little uh half-breed tears <laughs> you have gonna get put to death their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished and mentioning you women getting ravished again you know you uh and you know, uh, we first and foremost speak to our own people, but you Israelites out there, you know, men and women that are dealing with people of another nation. And once these race wars start and society collapses, hey, you better put that person away and go back to your own. And hey, it's going to be the same for you heathens out there that are dealing with those that aren't your own. Again, people are going to, you know, click up with their own. 
And uh, if you're not found, you know, amongst the right <laughs> gang, so to speak, you're going to get put to death. It doesn't matter if you went to a, uh, you know, your neighbor's football game or he came over and barbecued at your house when it's survival of the fittest. Hey, it's going to be dog eat dog. But again, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Kids getting put to death. Their houses shall be spoiled. What did it say back in Zechariah 14 verse 2? Their houses shall be rifled through and their wives, you know, women, ravished. So the main point of this video, terrible times are coming for you women, especially you Israelite women out there. So again, it would behoove you, you know, to gird yourself with sackcloth spiritually, you know, being in a uh, repentant, mournful state and coming back to your power, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. You know, acting like a feminine Israelite woman. You know, if you already have a man, they treat that man like your king. And to you single, you know, sisters out there, don't be trying to, you know, force the course of the rivers and try to find a man. You know, the Most High, and he will, you know, bring a man of the Lord across your path during Jacob's trouble. You should just focus on getting yourself right with Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Just as the men are focusing on getting right with their power. Yahabu Bahashem, Yahabu Shai. But that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. We are almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say, Abad Babol, Kwam Yasharala. And until next time, Shalom.